How do you get clients? As a freelancer consultant in the data science machine learning field, you're going to realize very quickly that your biggest challenge is finding clients and having a steady stream of clients to make sure that you're busy and booked as much as possible. Early on in my career as a consultant back in 2012, I was fortunate that I had referrals and I stumbled on this very quickly. And this is the most important thing that's going to bring clients to you is it's a relationship business. You're ready to put that shingle out on the front of your door and say, Hey, I'm a freelancer. Come hire me. When you have a network of people who could potentially bring you in, when you've built those relationships up over the years, and then when you have a network of people who are willing to hire you, that's when you can put that shingle out. And so realize first things first, it's a relationships game. You become your own sales and marketing department. And so you have to have people to sell and market to the first few people that you get. The first few clients are going to be people that, you know, they're going to be people that you've either worked with at a different business or in their existing business, you've worked with them and they want to rehire you or bring you in to do some consulting work and project work. That's going to be your initial pool of customers is people that you already know. And then that's going to expand a bit. You know, when I talk about relationships, what's incredibly important is to blow your clients away. Don't just deliver what they expect as far as value is concerned, just absolutely knock it out of the park because those early clients that you get, I mean, those, that pool of relationships that you have is only going to get you so far and only going to get you so many gigs. But when you do a great job for a client, that client is going to talk about you. And that's very important because you've built a relationship with them and you now have a promoter, someone who's going to go out. And when one of their network or one of their relationships says, Hey, I'm looking for somebody who does what you do. They're going to refer you. And so building up a referral network, building those relationships, doing an excellent job for your clients, really going above and beyond what you have to do and realize you may lose a little bit of value in that particular engagement by going above and beyond, but that is going to lead to them being a promoter and could potentially, you know, giving them a little bit more than you promised could potentially lead to your next client engagement. And so you're building relationships very early on in your consulting and freelance practice And that is going to drive the majority of your early client bookings and and engagements and the projects that you take on. And then, like I said, it expands out, but even that, that that's a pretty small pool. So what if you want to expand your business further for me, social media has worked amazingly well. I mean, social media is basically my marketing plan. Everything I do on social media, obviously I want to help people. I want to get knowledge out there, but you'll also see me push in some posts that explain my capabilities, what I can do and talk to people in my network about what I could do for them. What services do I offer? And that's really, that's huge for you. Your online presence is going to be a big part of free marketing for you. So the more time you spend on social media, the Basically, everything you do on social media is an ad. So the bigger the advertising network that you have and the lower your customer acquisition costs. This is something that you'll see as your business becomes more mature is customer acquisition costs can get pretty high. If you use social media to your advantage, it's a sort of passive client search and passive uh, customer searching where you're talking and you're growing your audience by providing your thought leadership, your information, your ability to teach people about the things that you do. And at the same time, you're establishing expertise and talking about what services you offer. Don't spam people on your social media feed, but feel free to market yourself and make sure people see what services you offer. Because as you build trust online and as you build that social presence, people are going to want to bring you in. But they may not know what you do unless on a regular basis, you're telling people, hey, don't forget, here are some services I offer. Go to this landing page, check out what it is that I can do for you. And so when you talk value and you build your social media presence, 
it's free advertising. It's free marketing. So definitely take advantage of it, especially early on. It'll reduce your customer acquisition costs and it'll give you a passive pipeline that goes beyond just that relationships network that you have. Because like I said, it's only going to get you so far. Now, I also had to do active discovery for clients. That means I have to go out and figure out, okay, who needs my services? And then I have to get them to notice me and to offer my services to them, to engage them. So how did I go out and find people who could potentially need my services? Well, first things first, I go out and I read a lot, especially just business news and business articles. Who's working with data? That was one of the earliest things that I looked at is which companies are looking for value from their data. Who's looking to monetize their data. That's obviously in my target market. And so those are some companies that I want to keep on the radar and I kept a list. And this was really just a potential client list where anyone that was talking about data, anyone that was explaining, you know, what they wanted to do with data, elaborating on a vision for this is what we're going to do with data over the next three to five years. Those were customers, potential customers for me. I'm also looking at anyone who's doing significant hiring in the data and analytics space. They are obviously investing in talent. And especially if they've had a ton of openings for a very long time, I know that they're struggling to find talent. And so I had an opportunity to introduce myself and be a bridge where I could do some of their project work for them. And in a lot of cases, this led to me leading their teams, building their teams and helping them get the right skills and capabilities and eventually building the entire strategy behind at first data, machine learning, and now AI. And that was really how I got into a lot of my client engagements and got into more complex work and higher end engagements was I looked at companies who were struggling to hire. So like I said, obviously investing. And if their job openings have been there for three to six months, they're struggling to get the right talent in the door and they need help. Not only a bridge, who, someone like me who can come in and do some project work almost immediately, but they're also going to need more complex help. And in some cases that's leading their teams. In some cases that's building their teams from scratch and building the infrastructure from scratch. So that's another good indication is if a company's had a bunch of job opens, openings that were on the market for three to six months. Now also I can look at just competitively what companies are lagging behind their competition. And this is pretty obvious when you look at it, especially if they have a public presence, you can tell which companies and especially three or four years ago, this was really easy to tell. You can tell that there are companies that are laggards whose initiatives simply aren't gaining traction. They're not using modern technologies. They've got a whole lot of legacy that's holding them back. And those are also potential clients because they're struggling and their C-suites basically, I mean, they're worried. They're worried about falling behind. They're worried that they're not moving fast enough. They're worried that their competitors are doing more and they're going to leapfrog them. And that fear it's a good way to network your way in and introduce your services and sell a valuable solution to a project or to a problem that they actually have, that they're keenly aware of. So if they're falling behind in the marketplace, those are good targets uh, for just a basic outreach. So now what, what's the outreach, outreach look like? I just network my way in. I look at who can hire me. And this is really critical. If you network your way into someone at too low of a level, they may not be able to hire you. And so you build this great relationship with someone who can't offer you a job. For me, I have to get hired by usually senior, very senior decision makers in leadership or the C-suite. I can't get hired by a director. So spending time networking with a director really isn't a good uh, outreach, active client discovery strategy. So I have to go hire executive VP or C-suite. I know exactly who I need to target. And you're going to need to look at the same thing. Who can hire you? If you're going into the data science team, are you going in as an individual contributor? Can the manager hire you? Are you potentially being brought in to build out the team? Does the director need to hire you? And so think about that. Who would be the one who would basically sign off on your contract? network in with that person. That's where you start. And there's usually four or five of that person per company. And so you can do multiple outreach and 
And just hit them on LinkedIn, see if you can get their email, see if you can get someone else to introduce you to them. Again, you know, you, you leverage your network, see if you can have someone make that introduction because you're a lot more credible when someone introduces you. Next, make sure you know your customer's pain points. What is it that hurts? And you heard that when I talked about those bullet points up and above. I know what the pain is for the C-suite, for my clients. I know they're scared of falling behind. I understand the constraints that they're operating under as far as a business. I understand the expectations that are being put on them by shareholders, customers, I mean, everyone. They're expected to be able to take data science and machine learning and use it to generate new revenue and efficiencies. And I understand their pain. A lot of people at the mid-level are having trouble getting budget. And at the very top in the C-suite, they're having trouble trying to figure out what they should allocate budget to. What platforms should they buy? Who do they need to hire? Who do they need to really hire? How do they make sure they're not just throwing money at something that isn't going to return value to them? So those types of problems, and there are dozens of problems in data science and machine learning that you can solve from a strategy standpoint, a leadership standpoint. And then there are literally thousands of use cases and business problems that you can be solving as an individual contributor. So know what your customer's pain points are. Make sure that you can solve them and that you're putting forth tangible strategies. Just talk about how you can address each one of those, you know, the problems that they have, the things that they may not be able to hire someone quickly to alleviate. Make sure it's obvious. Make sure your value proposition is obvious and it lines up with those pain points. So the value proposition, what's your value proposition? Really, it's what problems you can solve and why competitive advantage, why you can solve them better than the thousands of other consultants and freelancers that are out there. You're competing with a ton of different people. And if you have a good direct outreach strategy and you're talking to people who have significant pain points and significant needs, you have to realize you're probably not the only one who's called them up. You're not the only one who's offered services. And you could be competing with a massive, massive consulting company, but personalized service and truly connecting with the people that you're going to end up being hired with, understanding their needs, their pain points, and positioning yourself as a viable solution to them, selling your competitive advantages. You do that well, you can actually compete against very large consulting companies and be successful. That one-on-one -on -one relationship Never underestimate how powerful that is and how customers like to, in many cases, be treated like individuals, especially at the mid-management level. They like dealing with people that they have a level of trust with rather than massive companies that they eh, may not be so comfortable with or may not be so used to dealing with. So make sure that is a comprehensive package when you're talking to, when you're actively reaching out to customers. Not only do you have to discover customers that are looking for your services, but you also have to make it clear what you can do, what the advantage of you doing that is, and tie all of that to their pain points and make sure that they understand your solution to the problems that they really have. And finally, make yourself easy to contact and connect with. I can't tell you how many times I have worked with a company I've been trying to hire for a particular need. I find someone that I think is interesting and then I can't figure out how to contact them. It's really hard to get in touch with them or to book their services. So make that part of the process. Now that you've gotten someone's attention, make it stupid simple to book you. Make it very, very easy to just hook up, connect a meeting and bring you on board. So that process has to be seamless. You really have to make it easy for people to get from, I want to hire you to, I can hire you. Make that process as automated as possible. There are a ton of tools out there that allow customers to automatically book a meeting with you to even just buy a few hours of your time right then and there without having any sort of intermediary steps. The more steps it takes for somebody to book your time, the more likely it is that you won't get booked. The harder it is for someone to book your time, obviously the, hard, the more less likely it is that you are not going to get booked. So make sure that it's easy to get in touch with you and easy to contact you. So that's my best advice for how you're going to find your data science and machine learning clients. And hopefully that'll make your search a little bit easier.